on. Coming up on today's nightly news. Eurocrat says Britain should lose EU veto. Angela Merkel sticks to austerity script in Portugal as revolt builds. Respect those with guns. Portuguese army marches against austerity. In our letters section, when will the EU madness cease? And in our legislation section, annual report for 2011 on the activities of the European Ombudsman. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. Britain should lose EU veto, says Eurocrat. Britain should be stripped of the power to veto key European Union financial decisions following the bitter row over the Brussels budget, a senior Eurocrat has said. Viviane Reding, Vice President of the European Commission, complained that individual nations such as the UK were blocking progress in building the European family and she called for Brussels to assume sweeping power to set taxation policy across the entire 27-member EU. Wow, well that's pretty serious. She's advocating seizing the power to take control over taxation. Once a divine right of kings, and then after Magna Carta, the right of a democratic parliament. Now which of the British people granted such rights to these Eurocrats? Do you know of anyone who voted for this? Check out the full story and do give us your feedback on our website, theunit.com. Angela Merkel sticks to austerity script in Portugal as revolt builds. German Chancellor Angela Merkel braved hostile crowds in Portugal on Monday to show unflinching support for the country's austerity ordeal and plead for patience as social cohesion frays. The flying visit came as trade unions led a protest march through Lisbon in defence of national sovereignty and the left bloc in Parliament said its top priority is to bring down the government and forge a salvation front. Swooping into Lisbon amid tight security, Ms Merkel praised the courageous actions of free market premier Pedro Pesos Coelho and vowed to do everything possible to help the country through hard times. Yet. She also insisted that there would be no renegotiation of the country's 78 billion euro EU IMF troika package or softer terms to alleviate the slump, saying austerity is the only way forward. <laughs> now there it is again from Fraulein Merkel, the forked tongue of injustice. I will do everything possible except for anything that will help. Respect those with guns. Portuguese army marches against austerity. Thousands of soldiers in civilian dress have marched through Lisbon in protest of the austerity programme that's part and parcel of the country's 2013 budget. An estimated 10,000 active and retired military personnel rallied against the unjustified cutbacks, calling President Anibal Caveco Silva to veto the controversial austerity budget adopted by the centre-right government. Now, One soldier told AFP, We are getting cut after cut and there is no light at the end of the tunnel. The quiet march carried banners calling to respect the military and national sovereignty. Now there's that word again, national sovereignty. For clarity, I think the press mean the right to govern your own people in your own country. Well, our MPs in Brussels might not want to admit it, but the more they advocate austerity, the stickier it gets. Have any of them read Br'er Rabbit and the Tar Baby? In our letters section, Alan Smith writes, When will the EU madness cease? The EU is an economic disaster and Britain, along with other EU countries, is entering the final stage of financial destruction. I direct this to all British citizens who give any level of support at all to the EU and by definition especially to our government. You are destroying us, your country and all you supposedly care for. 
Just consider the facts. The EU is a vast organisation, requiring vast sums of money to sustain it. But the EU has not got any money. The EU is a vast consumer. It is not a producer. It does not create money. It only spends money. Well, thanks for a great letter, Alan. And you make a really excellent point. Indeed, the evidence seems pretty clear. We, we can see already that in Portugal, Greece and Spain, they're having real difficulties. You can read Alan's full letter on our website, theunit.com. And finally, in our legislation section, annual report on the activities of the European Ombudsman 2011. It is noted that the number of complaints submitted to the Ombudsman has gradually decreased in recent years. The introduction of the interactive guide, which has been available on the Ombudsman's website since January 2009, may well be proving very beneficial to the smooth running of the office. Most complaints were regarding the Commission, and this is considered logical for the Commission's decisions have a direct impact on citizens. In 2011, compared to 2010, fewer complaints were levied against Parliament, but more against the Council. Now call me old-fashioned, but if I was the EU Ombudsman, I would be on a recruitment drive right now. <laughs> anyway, that's it from me at uh, the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news, stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the EUnit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all our regular updates. And finally, of course, you can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus anytime. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.